What if I told you that building muscle might be one of the most powerful ways to protect your bones? For years, people with osteoporosis, and especially women, have been told to be careful, to avoid lifting anything that's too heavy, and that they should just walk a little bit to avoid doing anything that might cause something to break. Research actually tells us a very different story. It's not gentle movement that protects your bones, it's strength. Strength training isn't just for gym goers lifting heavy weights. It can actually be as simple as body weight exercises, using resistance bands at home or adding small weights as you build confidence. There are actually so many different ways to build strength and the key is finding the one that works for your body. If you wanna reduce your risk of fractures, improve your posture and feel stronger and more capable in your everyday life, then this video is for you. Hello my friends, I'm Sarah, a BoneFit certified fitness instructor, a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga, and a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen every year. And I am so glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. If the idea of strength training feels intimidating, or you're wondering why it matters so much for your bones, stay with me because we're gonna look at one of the most dramatic examples of bone loss and what can be done to stop it. Let's take a quick trip into space. Yes, outer space. Because what happens to astronauts when there's no gravity? Their bones start to weaken really quickly. In fact, astronauts can lose one to 2% of their bone density every month that they're in space. After just a six month stay at the International Space Station, that can add up to being a 10% bone loss, especially in key areas like hips and spine. That's a really big deal, and it can take years to rebuild what they lost. So the question is, what do they do about this, and can they prevent this kind of bone loss? For starters, astronauts don't rely on calcium alone. They strength train in a major way. NASA developed a machine that's called the Advanced Resistance Exercise Device, or ARID for short, that allows astronauts to stimulate heavy lifting in zero gravity. Astronauts actually use close to 270 kilograms on the ARID machine. They do 90 minutes of resistance training every day that targets their spine, hips, and legs. And these are the exact same areas that we want to protect here on Earth. So here's the takeaway from all of this stuff about astronauts. If resistance training works to protect bone density in zero gravity, imagine how powerful it can be right here on Earth where gravity is actually working in our favor. So we don't have a need like NASA's equipment to lift 270 kilograms of resistance. But what we do need is the right kind of loading, whether that's using a resistance band, a kettlebell, or even your own body weight. When this resistance is applied safely and progressively, it sends a clear message to your bones, stay strong. Not all movement is created equal when it comes to bone health. Let's have a look at swimming, for example. Swimming is fantastic for cardiovascular fitness, for joint mobility, and even for muscle strength. It's gentle, it's soothing, and it's low impact, which is why many people love it. But when it comes to building or maintaining bone density, swimming just doesn't provide enough of the mechanical stress that our bones need. This is because it lacks two critical forces, weight bearing and ground reaction forces. There's no impact in the water, and without that, your bones don't get the signal that they need to grow stronger. Cycling is another great form of exercise for endurance and for leg strength, but similar to swimming, it's not weight bearing, especially at the spine and the hips. In fact, studies show that long-term cyclists may have lower bone density than non-cyclists, particularly in the femoral neck, which is the common site of hip fractures. Let's take a moment and compare this to walking. Walking is a weight-bearing activity, and it does offer benefits for the hips and for the legs. It also helps to improve balance and coordination, which are essential for fall prevention. 
Walking has both benefits and limitations, and I think it's really important to understand what both of these are when it comes to bone health. So when it comes to brisk walking, studies show that if you were to walk for between 30 and 40 minutes at a pace of between three and three and a half miles per hour, it helps to maintain bone mineral density at the hip. Also, if you were to add a weighted vest, this can further increase the forces on both the hips and the spine, providing more of the stimulus that bones need to respond. Of course, weighted vests should be used safely and progressively, just like any other weights. And if you have scoliosis or spinal stenosis, then don't wear a weighted vest. In my opinion, walking is incredibly valuable for bone health. When we walk, we practice balance and we build strength at the hip, which does a lot for reducing the risk of having a hip fracture. It's also important to understand that there's a limitation of what walking can do for bone health. The impact of walking is still relatively low, especially if your goal is to build or to significantly maintain bone density. Research shows that walking alone usually doesn't prevent bone loss in the spine or the upper body unless the intensity or load is increased in some way. I think that a great combination is to walk and then to do some additional strength training that will also target your spine. In the next section, I'm going to show you how to apply safe, effective strength building strategies at home, no matter what your starting point is. So at this point, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, I get that strength training matters, but how do I actually start if I'm not comfortable at the gym? You can build strength safely and effectively at home by applying the right principles in a way that works for your body. So here are four body weight training exercises to work on at home. Number one, chair squats. I also like to refer to these as chair hovers. I do that regularly when I'm teaching a class. So this is where you lift yourself up out of a sitting position and then you hover between sitting and standing before lowering yourself back down again. This is a form of a squat, but you have the safety net of having a chair underneath you. And then you can also have a bit of a break between your chair squats if you need it. Start doing this exercise from wherever you are. If you can only hold this for a second or two, this is a really good start. As you do this more frequently, you'll gradually be able to hold this position for a longer period of time. Work your way up to being able to do a couple sets of five chair squats, holding each one for between 10 to 20 seconds each. This will strengthen your glutes, your legs, and your hips while also helping to protect your spine. Exercise number two, wall planking and wall push-ups. So these can be done while holding onto your kitchen counter or coming over to a wall. Bring your hands or your forearms out in front of you at the wall. Step your feet back, creating weight bearing. You have the option to keep your arms straight here or to create a bend in your elbows. You could even move back and forth between having a straight arm and a bent arm posture here. Moving back and forth between having a straight arm and a bent arm is a form of a push up. This exercise works your arms, your shoulders, and your core muscles, along with a bit of your upper spine. Exercise number three, resistance band exercises. Use your resistance bands to pull the band apart to reach your band up over your head. These exercises will strengthen your upper back and your shoulders, which helps to support your posture and it will help to improve your spinal alignment. Strengthening your back and your posture will reduce your risk for having compression fractures. You can also use resistance bands to take your legs out to the side with resistance. This is called hip abduction, and it will strengthen your hips and help to improve your balance. You can also do clamshells while seated, which will also strengthen your glute muscles with added resistance. All about the added resistance. All right, exercise number four, use hand weights. If you're feeling ready to add more resistance to your workout, try using some hand weights that are between one and five pounds. 
you can do a version of the chest fly where you hold your weights in front of you and then you take your weights out to the side. You can also take your hand weights up over your head. These exercises work the same muscles that you were busy working with resistance bands, but instead with hand weights, which give you some added resistance. If you don't have hand weights at home, then you might try holding water bottles or soup cans. You could also fill two shopping bags with some books, and then you could do a farmer's carry where you walk while holding even weights on both sides of your body. The key with resistance training is progression. It doesn't matter where you start. Strength is built gradually over time with consistency. This is not about perfection. Over time, your body will respond. And as your body and your muscles get stronger, your bones will also get stronger. So let's bring this all together. We've seen how powerful strength training can be, not just for building muscle, but also for protecting your bones and for preventing fractures. From astronauts in zero gravity to the research on walking, weight bearing and resistance, we know that bones respond to load. And you don't need to go to a gym or have any fancy equipment to start. Whether you're doing chair squats in your living room, using a resistance band at your kitchen counter, or maybe even adding light weights to your routine. What matters most is that you start where you are and that you keep going. Consistency and progression are the real secret ingredients to building strength and resilience. So I would love to hear from you. Share with me in the comments what's one strength building move that you're going to try out this week. Also, if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love who could also benefit from building stronger bones safely and confidently. Thank you so much for joining me today in the journey to better bone health. Together, we can spread the word, we can get stronger, and we can have more resilient bones. And on that note, I look forward to talking with you soon.